everybody. My name is Courtney. I'm a training specialist here at Van Hack in the events team. And today I am joined with, by Hannah from the Advice from Hannah podcast. We're going to be talking about speaking with confidence. And I am going to just hand it on over to her. I'm super excited you're here. Oh, Courtney, thank you so much for having me on and, and talking to all the women here in, in the chat room. I'm super excited and, and honored to be here. So Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Guzman. I am the founder and developer of the Advice from Hannah podcast and digital platform. I give speeches, talks, webinars, you name it. I've probably done it at this point, but I'm super excited and beyond like humbled to really be here today. So we're talking about confidence and where does it come and how do we how do we obtain it? So first and foremost, I want to give you the something I do at every everywhere that I go, and that's you are meant to be here right now. So at this very moment, you're meant to be here. You're meant to listen to this. Every single room that you walk into, you are meant to be there. So never think that any time that you are anywhere that, oh, maybe this room is not for me. Maybe I don't have the enough enough skill sets. Maybe I didn't I don't look the part. You are meant to be in absolutely every single room that you are, because if you weren't, then you wouldn't have made it in. So with that being said, I want to kind of dial it back. And before we start talking about being confident, I want to start talking about what it takes to be confident, right? So we go through all our lives as females, and, and most of us are really um shy, right? I was very shy. My upbringing, bringing, believe it or not, I was a very shy person. I didn't really talk much, but I'm very observant. So that's kind of gone with me. But if you don't become confident in your skills, you're not going to be able to speak or have opportunities or tell people what you're doing. So I have um, a saying that somebody told me and it's you know, closed mouth, don't get fed. So if you don't talk about what you do, then how will you know? So we're looking at in the job market right now, which is something I'm, I'm currently right there with you. You and I are not very different. I'm, I'm in the job market as well. And I do notice that what the difference between a candidate that goes through another round and a candidate that doesn't, it's who talks more about their interpersonal skills and their soft skills. So yes, we all went to school. Yes, we all have those fancy degrees with the stamps and the seals. And we, we've been through all the internships and, and we've done this. Yes. But what soft skills can you bring? Time management, interpersonal skills. Are you able to lead a crowd? Are you able to be persuasive? Are you able to hold conversations with different people from various levels, from junior to mid-management to C-suite CEOs? Are you able to talk to them, right? What are your strengths? I know everybody here has strengths that they don't really highlight. For instance, me, I make people feel comfortable. Whenever they talk to me, they always say, Hannah, I feel like I've known you my whole entire life, right? That's a skill set that I have. i I am approachable and I'm friendly and people feel comfortable around me, right? So that's something that I'm confident about, but nothing, a school couldn't have taught me that, right? That's something that comes within you. So whenever I think about speaking with confidence and how to be confident in interviews, I think about what are skills that make me unique? What are skills that I can portray that are good for this job? that I can see myself growing with this company? Do I align with their values? Do I align with what the job is asking for, where I want to be in the next one to two years? Notice I said one to two years, because I, I feel like in the time that we're living, planning for five years is just beyond me. But, you know, is this company where I want to work in? Will they align with my values and the things that I want to talk about? Right. So uh, another part of being confident is your what I, I like to talk about a lot is your body language. What is your body language saying to you? Are you cross armed like this? Or are you like this? Or are you rolling your eyes? Or are you like people talk to you and you, you kind of look away? Right. So that shows to me that you're not ready to have this conversation with me, that you may be the most qualified person in this room, but you're not confident enough to actually portray your body language that it's that you're ready for it. Right. So 
when you're in these interviews, when you're meeting people, when you're in a networking event, it to me, how how you're dressed and there's people that, you know, are specialized in, in what colors you need to wear and what stands out. But realistically, you could be wearing the, the most powerful suit that you have and you're and you're slouchy. And and you know, you're you're speaking really low. So to me, that doesn't showcase confidence. To me, that showcases that perhaps you're a little scared and that's fine. We're all nervous, but the person that you're talking to could be nervous too. Sometimes we get to these positions and we have no idea how, and we become nervous. So my next point is that I want to talk about, and it's, and it's super important. And it's how to read your room. I, I will talk about that for a very long time because I find it super important. So for instance, we can use this room today, right? Who's in the room? Did you Google me? Did you go on LinkedIn? Did you try to find me on social media? So in the room that you're going into, the speakers, the company, the person that invited you, we're going to be little detectives now, right? We're going to take our magnifying glass and we're going to search online for them and see what their likes, see what their dislikes are. Draw something mutual. For instance, I'm learning how to cook. I, I've fallen in love with the kitchen. I think it's it's a place where my perfectionism can really shine because, you know, the way something looks, feels, and touches is super important to the eye. So that's a simple fact for me. And let's say I'm in a room and I see somebody who also I've seen on social media likes cooking. I can go up to them and, hey, I saw that you posted a salad last week that had beets, pears, and feta cheese. That sounds really good. How did that taste for you? Right. So there, there's a small talk. We're not talking about, you know, the the position. We're not talking about how can I get hired? We're not talking. We're just talking small, something, something small that can lead you to a bigger conversation, because sometimes we forget the human approach to things. What's the human approach? Let's let's dial it back a bit, bit and be human. OK, so now we know who the speakers are. Now we know where this is being held, at what time it's being held, how long it's going to take me to get there, what time do I need to arrive, at what time do I want to depart. So we, we've done the research and now we're in this room with everyone and you're nervous because everybody in here wants, wants an opportunity. Who doesn't want opportunity? I want an opportunity. You do. Everybody does. I want the best opportunity there is possible. But I'm the one that dictates which is the best opportunity to, and if it aligns with my goals and in my aura and my person. So now that you've read the room, you're going to walk into it confident, shoulders back, head up, smile, and you just look approachable. You, you look like somebody who really wants to be there. Even though you may feel insecure, even though you may feel like your skills aren't top notch, to every single bulletin point that that job may have, but you are you and that's your superpower. That's where you shine because nobody else in the world can be you. Nobody. You're the person that is you. So as we're, as we're in this room, we're learning how to, how to read the room. Earlier in the conversation, I talked about how somebody with arms crossed or, or slouching, they may not look approachable, but now that we've learned the, the tips and the tricks of who who to look for and what to look for, we're going to approach this person. Hi, how are you? My name is Hannah. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Who is, that is exactly right. You're the main character. I love, I love somebody drop that in the chat because I, I really think that that's important. You're the main character of the story. This is your stage. Um, I, I always have this, this reference. You're the stage manager. You're the lights. You're the main actor. You decide who gets to be on the stage with you. You decide who gets to walk and talk and be with you at that given moment, because confidence, I, I'm doing a whole webinar about confidence. I think it's such an important thing because oftentimes I haven't been the person in the room that knows the most, but I've gone through the door because I'm confident that I can learn anything. We can learn anything. As human beings, we're, we're born. We don't know how to talk. We don't know how to walk. We don't know how to eat. We don't know how to sleep. All those things we get taught as, a, as children. We learn how to eat, sleep, talk, and walk. So anything that's in front of you, job-wise, uh, career-wise, you can learn everything. You went to, to post-secondary education. You went to high school. You didn't know how to do trigonometry, you know, microeconomics, uh, technology. I, I didn't even know how to 
I didn't even know how to open Word. Okay, somebody had to teach me <laughs> from the 80s. So it, it's just something that you continue learning and growing throughout. I've been somebody, for instance, I could share a personal story with you because that's what I do. Um, I started my brand four years ago and I had no idea. I've never been on a stage before. I, at that point in my career, I had never been on a stage before, but I really wanted my name in lights. I wanted to see Hannah and lights on a big stage with a crowd and everything. That's that's still my goal. I still I'm still chasing it. I haven't seen it to the to the ability that I know I can get. And I opened an Instagram page and I went to work. I started posting pictures of myself. I started posting write-ups of how I feel, you know, I, I'm very candid, very confident. And I started sending messages. I started sending direct messages to different brands and different um, organizations, people of influence, asking them, what do I have to do to get on stage? How come you're not having an event? How can we get to work together? So I created my opportunities. Sometimes you have to create your opportunities because if you sit around waiting for somebody to give them to you, they're never going to happen. So I must have sent around 200 messages to different organizations, different people. Some of them still nobody's answered me. And this is four years later. And I finally met somebody who we're very dear friends now. We've done a ton of business together. And I messaged her and I said, hey, you have this brand. You have X amount of followers. Why haven't you done an event yet? So this story is really important. Why I'm saying it to you guys today. It's because sometimes the conversation that you're going to have with somebody, you're going to create that opportunity for yourself. You're going to create that job. You're going to find the need for them. And you're going to tell them what it is and that you're the best person for them. So I had messaged her and I said, well, I think you need to do an event. You have a very strong brand online. And why don't you do an event to get all your online community in the same room together and cross pollinate and create opportunities for each other? I convinced them till this day, you could talk to them. They always laugh of how I convinced them to have an event for their brand. <laughs> I had no business asking them to do that. But in that room four years ago, I met so many phenomenal women. And to last night, I got a call from somebody who was in that room. Her and I have not been able to collaborate together. And she said, I still remember meeting you four years ago and thinking that you were fabulous. And that has taken four years, four long years of me doing different things just to, you know, get to be in business with her, get to collaborate with her and, and work on a special project that she's doing. And that took four years. So this goes into my next point is the day that you plant to see is not the day that you eat the fruit. You could be in a networking situation. You could be interviewing for a job and that job, that networking event, you may not see anything at all. You may not be able to grasp anything at that given moment, but your attitude and your personality and your willingness to work will leave an impact to those that you meet. For instance, like I said, four years ago, I met somebody and now we're doing business. So this is something that I always try to stress whenever I'm doing um, any sort of, of event or webinar I'm speaking. The day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. So always remember that every interaction is not an instant transaction. So I understand that you may be at this specific place and right there in the next two weeks, the next 48 hours, it may not be your time. And that is okay because you have to understand that later on that interaction will fuel it. But now this is my next point for you. I need you to learn the art of keeping in touch and following up. We went to this event, we spent our mind, you know, our money, we, we, put in the research of how to look in for, you know, who's going to be in that room. We said the right things. We shook the right hands, but then you just leave it. Why? You, you leave the interaction. You do not follow up. You do not make conversation. You never reach out to them again because you didn't get what you wanted, right? You're like, oh my goodness, I didn't get that opportunity, right? So I'm known, I'm one of my strengths is building a genuine relationship with people. That is my, my muscle. That's what I flex. So after you go
go to these events, after you go to these networking networking interviews, if nothing pans out, send a thank you note, send a follow-up note, interact with them on social media, on LinkedIn. They post an article, right? Hey, I think this article is amazing. I really like how the, how the publisher highlighted points A, B, and C. We spoke about when we met C, D, and E. Thanks for posting that. I really think that it's an amazing article. With that, you've made now a follow-up to that first interaction that you made to something that they're talking about. And then now you've also linked it to your views. That also counts. That also counts because now you're interacting with that person that you've built that relationship with. You're, you're now creating. It took me four years to have business with her, right? So in those four years, I've been interacting with her. I've been talking with her, you know, seeing which whenever she goes to an event, I've gone to one or two of them. Show support. Be in, be in those people's corners. Let's say, for instance, you were at a networking event and the company that you want to work for, they're having a webinar. Sign up for it. Sign up for the webinar. Go to the in-person events that that company is having. Why not? Because at least now you're becoming more in tune with the culture and what everyone is doing. So creating genuine friendships. I could talk for the next three hours about the way that I've been able to leverage my relationships and leverage my network in order to, to make opportunity, but it takes time. It takes time and it takes patience and it takes a lot of dedication and strategizing in order for you to be able to get into the, the rooms that you're in or, or the jobs that you like. When I started my platform, for instance, I had no idea how to podcast, no idea, but I was good at interviewing and I'm so phenomenal at interviewing. That's one of my strengths also. I'm here bragging about myself all day. But um, it's it's something that my audience asked for. I would do Instagram Lives back when Instagram didn't have a, you know, you couldn't save the lives. And when I started doing that, my audience, mind you, I had like 200 followers. I had nothing. I, I don't, followerships to me, that doesn't equal to anything. It's the quality of the relationships, not the quantity. So when I started doing those, everybody would ask me, hey, Hannah, why don't you do a podcast? And you should really do a podcast because I like how you sound. You make me feel comfortable. I had no idea how to do podcasts. I didn't know anything about the editing. I, no idea. I studied business. I didn't study media. So it was way outside my comfort zone. And truth be told, I started podcasting. Somebody gave me a mic. As a gift, I plugged it in the computer and I said, hi, this is your girl, Hannah. And that was 125 episodes ago. So I'm about, yeah, 125 episodes in. That single action of somebody telling me to do something has spiraled and has given me phenomenal, just phenomenal exposure. I've been able to speak for Microsoft. I've been in a real room post-COVID. It was super cool. I had a breakout session on, on how to do podcasting and that happened through networking. And that happened through being confident. Somebody had put an ad, don't be afraid. When somebody puts an ad out that they're looking for somebody, don't be afraid to say that you're the best candidate for it. Why not? Of course you're the best candidate because you're the one that spoke up. So that opportunity happened for me because again, I was on LinkedIn. Also your LinkedIn profile, make sure it looks fabulous. Uh, make sure it, it highlights all your strengths and your skills. It has a like a catchy title uh, for people to to connect with you. For instance, I'm a networker speaker. Um, and what I did, my, I took a course, actually, a, a friend of mine taught a master class on how to make your LinkedIn marketable. And I think my line is known to make intuitive connections with people. That sounds interesting. What does she do, right? It's It's something that's really important for you to have your social media your social media presence is there. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be on there every day, but make sure that at least you're you're being able to be Googled, uh, to be found by, by future employees and, and people that want to work with you in the industry. It's really important that that we that we are ourselves, right? This is my next speaking point. Just be yourself. I know it sounds so simple and we're so scared. And what if we say the wrong thing? What if nobody likes me? What if, you know, my the color that I wore was too bright or the color that I wore was too dark. We could think about a hundred scenarios of what can go wrong 
when we're in a room. And when you're yourself, it's your superpower. Being you, being yourself is your superpower. Because at that point, you're not putting on a show or a facade. And when you get the dream job, when you get the position that you want, you can be yourself. How hard is it for you to be something that you're not? And then now you have to put on this show every day that you have to go on to work to be this person that you're not. <laughs> I need you to be yourselves, your true authentic selves. And if that position, that that networking event, that opportunity is for you, it's going to align like this. It's going to fit in so well that it will be easy for you to do so because you're not there by mistake. You have the skills, the soft skills, the hard skills, the educational background. You're able to navigate the room with confidence. You're standing straight. You're smiling. You're talking. You've done your research on everyone in the room. You've made sure that you know what's happening and who's doing what and and what can happen if you talk to this person? There's so I'm an overthinker by trade. You're you're really seeing it now, and you know it, it's just being yourself will allow you to feel better. I've been in rooms that I feel super uncomfortable in. That women in those rooms are CEOs, CFOs. They've they've talked to Barack Obama. Like they've been women. I've been in rooms with women that are just superstars in their trade, and I've had to be confident. Because I'm scared. Of course I'm scared. I'm scared when I'm going into these rooms. I'm nervous. What if they don't like me? They have so much more to offer than I do. But here's a kicker part. I'm in that room with them. I'm in there with them. So that means you're not there by mistake. You're there because you have to be. We are all equal. All of us have feelings. We all have different skill sets and attributes. And we can't be the same as other people because then that would be boring. Right? What if you had all the skills like everybody else? And how would you stand out? Because the next person is doing the exact same thing you are. Right? So it's always important for you to realize I keep stressing that enough because I find that I really missed out on so many opportunities in the past because I didn't feel like I was supposed to be in those rooms. I thought that I didn't belong, that everybody else was smarter than me, um, that my voice didn't matter, that my question was was silly you know, that nobody would want to listen to me. I've had all those thoughts go through my head. But, you know, the minute that you ditch the imposter syndrome and imposter syndrome is so syndrome. Can I say it right? Imposter syndrome. So I said it right now. I could sing. I can't sing. But, you know, imposter syndrome, a friend of mine actually had to tell me what that meant because I was it was so real in in my in my area of, of life because I felt that I was being fake, that being in those rooms, grabbing the mic, speaking to hundreds, I I felt that I was I was fake, that this wasn't me, that, oh, what are these people doing? They're coming to see me speak. I don't have anything to say. And that's literally the old you trying to hold you back from what greatness today, right? Let me say that again. The old you can hold you back from greatness today. So that person that it took you to become your greatest self, your greatest person, Today, that person will try to hold you back and tell you, well, you don't deserve that opportunity. You don't deserve that position. Why did you ask for more money? Why did you ask for more vacation time? Why did you ask for flexibility? You know, that person who's scared in the background will will say, well, now you've asked for too much. There's never enough that you can ask for. I think everybody in this room can hold on, can ask for anything you want. Because if you don't ask, you don't know. You don't ask, you don't know. What if, wow, you know, we really do have the budget to do that. Or, wow, I think that's such a great idea. You're going to be able to rock that. Can you lead that initiative? And now you're now you're a leader. Now you're a leader. You said the idea that's in your head. And at least one other person in that room feels the same way you do. At least one. I'm telling you, sometimes I ask questions or, or do things and I'm like, oh, man, I really think I'm the one. Maybe I'm the only one. And truth be told, somebody usually at the end of my speaking engagement at the end of my meeting, even in my corporate job myself, I do I do work in the technology uh, field. Whenever I do ask a question in a meeting, somebody always comes to me later and says, I really wanted to ask that question, but I felt that it would be silly or it's not the smartest question to ask. So if you're thinking about a question, ask it. If you want to challenge 
you're you're superior and, and you think that I an idea or a question is not aligned with you, then do so. Right? So do so because if you don't, then they'll forever think. Sometimes I'm I I question or I I, I try to poke holes at theories because I want to see if if really that's what you want to do and if you're aligned for it. I know so many of us like we feel shy, maybe we might say something wrong, but every question is valid. Everybody has the right to ask questions and, and say things because if not, the worst thing in the world to me, one of my greatest fears is not knowing. I'm going to do this to you because if you don't know, if I didn't ask, I would never know. And the the fear of not knowing will drive me bonkers. It, that is my That is my one pet peeve. If you don't ask, then you're going to never know the answer. And that have, may have been the greatest opportunity. You asking this question, it may have actually taken a theory that somebody was given and and just make them open up their mind and think about other possibilities. That's where the magic happens, right? When, you, when you're confident in your skill set and what you do, you're able to take that and, and rise with it. I keep going back to the point of, I know so many of us were shy and we think that we don't know enough or, you know, there's always like that, that opportunity or, or sometimes a feedback. I've gotten the worst feedback ever, ever, ever. I got told once by um, somebody that, oh, well, you think because your, your looks will get you all the open doors and trust me, they have not helped at all. <laughs> my looks have not helped me at all. Okay. I, I think that they have just taken me and it, it, it has just been twice as hard because it, it just has. So sometimes we hear that and that feedback to me, that really hurt, right? Because I'm, I, I think I'm like, oh, okay, well, are they, is it really, are they really just talking to me because of my looks or are they, you know, and that really, that played with me for a couple of years, not anymore. Now I'm just, this is me and this is who I am and nobody else can take that away from me. I, I've had to learn that. I've had to ingrain it into my head, but I, I've done that because I've done the work, right? I, I've, I've done the work to get here. I've continuously do the work and something that has helped me that I always share. I don't, I haven't really shared it in a while. So I, I feel like this group is special in particular, and I feel like you will benefit this. So you take sticky notes, like little post-its or even a piece of paper with tape and in the mirror, when you're getting ready in the morning or whenever you get ready to go to work, you tape the little piece of paper about this, this big, and you put it on your mirror and you write affirmations, positive things that you could say to yourself. With me, some of mine is I am competent enough to do anything I want. I will thrive under any circumstances and I am the baddest chick out there. Okay. The third one is a little for me to hype myself, but we, we put those and we read them every day. Like it, it worked wonders for me. It still does. I say it to myself and as you're getting ready, you're putting on your mascara, you're combing your hair. You're like, I am confident. I'm the baddest chick out there. I can do this. And as you're talking to yourself and you're saying these things, you believe them because you're telling them to you. I know sometimes a little negative Nancy will be like, no, you're not. And then you just tell Nancy to shush and that, no, this is what I am today. I'm confident. I can do this. And as you're walking into the rooms, you're you're hyping yourself up. You're telling yourself, I'm confident. I can do this. I'm the best person for this job. If they didn't like me, they wouldn't have called. <laughs> if you know, if I wasn't qualified, I wouldn't be here. And you are here. So that means you you do have what it takes. And you just repeat that over and over and over again in your head. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, shoot, today, today is the day, you know? And, and I think of myself so highly. I really do now at this point. I think of myself so highly because if I don't think highly of myself, nobody else will. Nobody else. Well, maybe your mom. But other than that, nobody else but your mother will think highly of you. So you have to think highly of yourself and you have to walk into these rooms like you are the best candidate in the world because confident works. Confident works. What is the difference? You know, I, I use the example sometimes when I'm at a concert and I buy a bottle of water and the bottle of water costs me six dollars 
okay, for a bottle of water that I can go to the store and buy it for $2. But at the concert, I buy it for 6 Why? Because the venue has the confidence that, A, I can't leave that venue to go buy my $2 water. Two, I need it right now. Three, my favorite artist is singing in the background and I really want to go listen to him. So I don't have the time to think about why is this $6? I'm just going to take my money and go. So think of yourself like the $6 water bottle that, you know, we can get it for two, but guess what? Today we're $6 and nobody else will be able to tell me any different. I'm the, I'm the premier distilled water, the sparkling water, not the tap water, even though it all probably starts as tap water. So Take yourself as that. Pretend, not pretend, know that you are prime time. You're the best water out there. And the person that's going to give you that job needs you to be there, right? It's definitely something that I like to do and it's being positive and, and driving that. But I have to I have to talk about this because if I don't, then I'm going to be very upset with myself. The other part of positivity and motivation and everything that, you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to keep going. And that's discipline. We have to be disciplined. Uh, I I find that discipline goes hand in hand with motivation for me personally. I I know that they don't really talk about this very often, but you have to be disciplined in yourself and, and know that it takes hard work and it takes dedication to get to the places that you need to get to in your positive and, and you're great along the side. You're the sparkling water. You're the guacamole, you know, you're the, you're everything. You're the side shrimp to the steak. Okay. You are everything you can imagine, but you have to be disciplined and you have to make sure that, you know, maybe this is not going to work out. Perhaps this opportunity is not for me, but I'm disciplined enough and I'm, I'm focused on the end goal. What are your goals, right? Being confident, having motivation, having the skill set, being disciplined. But what are your goals? What it? So I need you at least before we jump we jump off of here. um, I want you to take a piece of paper and a pen, or on your phone or on your laptop, and write down one goal. One, very simple. One goal, right? I have a goal this year for myself. And it's to, I I will share my goals with you because I like doing that. I like sharing my goals. And it's to impact one female a month. That's my goal. Impact one female a month. So I want to impact females in a positive way. I want to rise, make sure that they rise. I want to make sure that they're doing the best that they can. But that's my goal. That's one goal I have for myself. Impact females, impact one female a month. You're like, well, Hannah, really just one, one female. Yes, just one. Because it starts off with one goal. One small action every single day will be able to lead you to the next step. So for you, for instance, I know a lot of the females in this chat right now, we're looking for new opportunities. We, we're looking for a new lifestyle. We believe that we deserve that lifestyle because you know what? Yes, of course, I want it. I want to go to the nice restaurants. I want to be able to have extra money in my pocket. I want to be able to buy the things that I like. Of course, who doesn't? But that comes with work and that comes with discipline and 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 motivation. Then that comes with a price tag. So you have to be able to do the to do the work that you want to do. So what is your goal? I, I really I really try to leave everyone with with just something to take away from this. And it's what is your one goal? In the next three months, I want to be able to do this. I will be able to. So even if it's reaching out to one one key player a month. So I really want to work for Hanna Corporation. I don't have a corporation. But, you know, I really want to work for Hanna Corporation. That is my goal in six months. What will I do? This month, I will send an email over introducing myself and what I do. They're not hiring. Hanna Corporation doesn't exist. I'm not hiring yet. I said, yeah, see? So, you know, write an email over, hey, I really like what you do. I'm interested. My skill sets are this. Okay, that's my goal of the month. I spoke to Hannah Corporation. So next month, I'm going to interact with her on social media and a post that she does. Okay, I drop a post. Wow, Hannah Corporation, I really think that's amazing. Next month, I'm going to ask her for a 15-minute chat. 
I'm going to say, hey, I really like what you're posting, but I noticed that you're missing out on this. Find something. Find something that they're missing out on. Talk to them for 15 minutes. Hey, thank you so much for taking your time out. I really noticed that your last post that you talked about um, how to make, you know, spaghetti carbonara. But you know what I found that spaghetti carbonara? It, it's really cool when you buy this brand. And if you take your sauce and you let it sit for three hours on low heat, I think that's really cool, Hannah. Maybe you should check it out. Okay, I did that. Next month, now that we've connected, inspired, talk, month number four, what are we going to do? Hey, I saw that you're posting, you know, that you need an, I don't know, a developer for your app. I know somebody that's a developer, me. I've done this. I've done that. This is my skill set. This is what I do. But we've been talking for the last three months. So, hey, you're able to do that. So make small, little, tiny, bite-sized goals for the month, and that will lead to big action. Um, for me, when with my speaking my speaking engagements, I, I started with the podcast. So how will people hear me speak? They listen to me every week. So every week, I would drop an episode. Okay. But now as I did that for, you know, about three, four months, so about 12 episodes, I said, wait, but only my people are hearing me speak. Hmm. Oh, let me start interviewing people. So now I'm speaking, but another community member is speaking with me. So I will get access and play to their community and they'll get access and play to my community. Don't be afraid to team up with, with partners, with other colleagues and, and really try to, to have opportunities for yourself. I really think that when you work together, we rise by lifting each other. So don't be afraid that if you see an opportunity and you know a colleague or a friend or somebody that you met, hey, we talked about this, I saw this opportunity. I really think that that could be cool for you and send them the job posting. There's no harm in that. There's no harm. There's, there's opportunities for everyone. I'm somebody that sends opportunities to people all the time. Um, it, seriously, all the time, at least like once or twice a week, if there's something online that I see, hey, that kind of resonated with me with your skill set, go take it, ap apply. That doesn't take away because as, as females, if we're together and we start building together, we rise even faster, right? We have to look out for each other as well because the males do it. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to talk about them. The males do it all the time. They give opportunities to each other all the time. So you know, it, it's something that I always try to to talk about and, and join. If you're feeling that you don't have the confidence to speak, there's tons of groups online. Um, join association, join groups, go to events, and really just try to get yourself out there in order to, to meet more people. I started my brand. I didn't know a single person. I did not know anybody. Nobody in the media space. Now I can say, I know a handful of cool people that I can talk to, but I went to events. I started associating myself with them. I, I started supporting their initiatives, reposting what they were talking about. It's really important when you have the people around you understanding what you like. And this is my next point, which I think is super important. And I want to touch upon this. And I've said it, everything's important because I, I feel like I, I want to give you as much as I can, but having people in your life that understand what you're doing is very important because your friends that you grew up with, your family members, everybody, they know a certain person, which is you, which is you as a child, you as a teenager, you know, schooling, they know that person, but the person that you're trying to become, they don't know that person yet. And neither do you, right? So they may just not understand, well, why are you doing this? You know, I got a lot of feedback, oh, but you're going on stage. What if you say something wrong? What if people judge you? What if you don't succeed? What if you never get called? Oh my goodness, I heard it all. Um, but then I said, well, this is the wrong group of people that I'm around. Not to say to stop talking to your family and friends, no, no, but also find new friends. So that's where you find them. When you go networking places, when you sign up for the for the focus groups, when you sign up for the, the cohorts, that's where you network and you find people with like-minded like you, because they wouldn't be in a group if they don't think like you or think closely to you. So, you know, it, it's very important for, for everyone to connect with each other, not, you know, make friends with everybody in, in the room, but at least one genuine connection. And that may be able to help you like, hey, 
I'm, I need help with this. I saw your strengths and your skills were okay with that. So I really, I really think that it's important for us to join groups. I'm part of a few women's group and they're phenomenal. I've been able to get so much help. I've coached them on, on, you know, when they're about to speak on stage on how to stand straight on what angles to show to the camera when they're, you know, it's just one of those things that, that we've taught each other, but I needed help with interviewing skills. I haven't interviewed in forever. I know the irony in that I interview people, but I haven't interviewed in forever. So I had a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago come prep me for a very important interview. And she told me different questions. And she told me, you know, hey, I think you should say this. I think we should do that. And it was very helpful. It was 30 minutes of her time. I know she's a very busy individual, but she coached me, right? So sometimes the friends that you make in these rooms, like in this room right now, even when you go to other webinars, try to be a friend, try to make sure that everybody cross pollinates and gets to know each other because that's how we rise collectively as, as humans. I can't tell you the amount of group chats that I've been in and, and, you know, these kind of chats or zoom chats that I've been able to make really cool friends. And along the line, we, we create business together. We create products together, um, earrings, things like that. I've been really able to leverage the people that you meet along the way, because let me tell you, the road is, is takes a lot of twists and turns. And sometimes you don't know who you're going to meet. So it's better when we're together, right? It's better when we're together. It's better when you have people who are like-minded with you and, and are holding your hand throughout the journey because they understand what you've been through and they understand it. Not that your family and friends don't, but somebody that may have been standing where you stand could really, you could really benefit from hearing that and talking about opportunities with each other, right? So us speaking with confidence and being confident with us is also having the right people around us. I can't begin to tell you the amount of people I've been able to, because I'm known to make intuitive connections. Uh, so the amount of people that I've connected together, that I've made business, that I have worked with each other. And it's just the most beautiful thing, really, when you see two individuals that you know could be work well together, even if it's just a group text, you're in, you're in a group chat. Hey, you're going to do great in that interview today. Hey, tell me how it went. How did it go? And you're able to feel that support uh, virtually, it's, it's a game changer. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be able to survive without my group chats. <laughs> my group chats are just everything and anything to me because they, they have been able to, to empower me and motivate me and give me confidence to reach for the stars and, and reach for opportunities that I never would have thought possible. But when you see people in your circle, when you see people in your network doing the things that you'd like, oh man, Let's go. That lights a fire in you that it's unexplainable. It's it's what makes me who I am, right? So I know that so many of us are shy, that we don't know if we're going to be able to make it, if this person's asking me. I, I always find this question of, you know, why do you want to, why do you want to work here? Why not? You know, and I and I always I always flip it, like, why not? Why wouldn't I want to work here? And you you list everything that the company is doing, that how it aligns with you, how your skills align with that. And it's just something that we're able to, to grow together. And, and really, because the person that's interviewing you or the networking or the networking room that you're in, they were you once upon a time. They didn't have any connections. They didn't have anywhere to go. They didn't, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know if they were dressing right. Oh my God, some of my fashion choices when I see my earlier dad, like what was I thinking? Right. But you know, along the way, you you learn and you realize your your personal style, your personal, how you, you know, how you can interact with people, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses? And failing is important. Fail, fail often. If you went to an interview, if you were in a networking session and it didn't work out, learn from that. Learn from it. Learn where did I, what did I do wrong? I should have approached it this way. Always see everything as a learning opportunity and an opportunity to grow and become yourself, right? Because all of this starts with you. I can sit here and I can tell you all the tips and tricks that I have in my bag of how I've become confident. But if you don't believe it in yourself, it will be very hard, not impossible for you to convince the person on the other hand, on the other side of your skills, of your attributes, right? Unless the person is has a 
can see that you're nervous and will give you that opportunity. But sometimes these the, the people in corporations they don't have a lot of time. They they don't have you know a, that that extra ten minutes to get it out of you. So you have to be willing to say it right. So I find it's really important for you to to stand in your power and and be confident in your skill sets because what you know I have no idea. This is why I interview people. <laughs> This is why I interview people because I I, I want to get to know what they do because I, I can only see as far as as what I know, what I've learned. So that's where all of us cross-pollinating and getting to know each other is really super important, right? So it's it's the the World Wide Web is a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. And I really think that everyone in this room will succeed. You will get everything that you want if you stay disciplined, focused, motivated, confident in yourself, and you really believe that the opportunity that's being handed in front of you is for you and you're worthy of it because it starts with you. And once you open the door of greatness, everything, absolutely everything will come your way and everything will manifest. I'm I'm living proof of it. If you would have told me four years ago that I would be speaking to you guys today virtually, I would have laughed. Like me speaking to people virtually? Are you crazy? I didn't even, I wouldn't have never talked to anybody for like more than 10 minutes, right? I, I'm a natural gabber, but I, I mean, in a stage wise, right? And let alone people from all over the world through a screen. Are you nuts? So it would have never been a thought for me, but it is now. As you keep walking through life and you keep meeting different people and different opportunities, definitely things open up for you. But I feel like I've been I've been going for a while and I want to hear from you guys. So I, I want to thank you so much for, for hanging out with me and, and talking with me about speaking with confidence and becoming a better human. I know Courtney is somewhere back there if anybody has any questions for me or wants to know anything. Um, I'm more than happy to respond. Hello, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, please feel free if you have any questions, you can throw them on into the chat um, because we have about 10 minutes left with Hannah and we want to pick her brain as much as we can. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you have any questions? Do you have a question? Let's start off with you, maybe. Me? Oh, that's exciting. Um, what would you... Okay. How do you handle rejection? Oh, rejection. I love it. <laughs> I love rejection. At this point in my life, I love being rejected because it's a redirection, right? So I really think that whenever I get rejected, A, I saw the potential in something that I could do, right? So maybe it's a no today, but not a no forever. I, I don't think that, you know, okay, they said no to me, but I still take it with grace. Thank you very much. I sent a follow-up letter. Thank you for for allowing me to have time with you and your organization to talk about, you know, XYZ Corporation. Um, I do wish your candidate, the, the successful candidate, uh, the best. If you have any question or see anything that I may be a fit in in the future, let me know. Let me know. And you leave that little door of opportunity open and, and now you've made a good impression. I know most of us, when we get rejected, we want to cry and scream, oh my God, the world is over. Nothing. Nothing is ever going to work out, but it, it, <laughs> it can, right? I've gotten, so I've had that where I was like the second, second choice for a job. And I, I ended it really nicely. I gave her a, a, like a really awesome thank you. And I was like, you know, if anything does come up, please let me know. Person they hired didn't work out. And then they called me, but I had, I already started working at VanHack. So I was like, no, sorry. <laughs> but I, I left the door open and I, you know, it, it worked. Uh, so being being appreciative, even if it's a no and keeping a conversation going. You still made it through all the ranks of everybody that yes. apply, round one, two, three, however many rounds they have. And so you were close. So keep mm -hmm. that conversation going and keep it go and keep it open. Exactly. I, I always like to tell people that like, even if you don't make it to the second round or the third round or whatever, you got the first call though. So that's something they were still interested enough to pick you out of a hundred, 200, however many people applied, you still got a first round call. So that's something. 
Okay. And we have one question here in the chat. How to overcome imposter syndrome? That oh my a goodness. Whole five hour topic, but <laughs> maybe like the quick <laughs> Cole's note. Also, I like we can do a master class on how I have friends that do master classes on how to become overcome imposter syndrome with like notes. Um, you know what? With me, the affirmations really helped me. Um, like the the putting it in the mirror and, and writing that I am powerful, that I'm I'm the baddest chick ever, you know, that I deserve these opportunities. That really helped me, but it really comes within you that the things that people talk said to you negatively in the in the past really do play a part in today and we have to be honest about it but i always think that if what the imposter the negative nancy in my head is saying is true i wouldn't be right here talking to you today i would have been like courtney no i'm sorry i can't go on camera i don't know what we're doing here and i would have said no right but then i wouldn't have met all of you right so for every single negative idea or comment in your head Try to combat it with something positive and, and, and fight with yourself all day, even though it takes all day. Sometimes it, it's back and forth all day, but, you know, and I talk to my dog too, um, but <laughs> it, it's something that that's what I do. Negative, take it with a positive and repeat until you, until you embodied it. I also, so I'm, okay, legitimately, this is a therapy technique from CBT, but picture if you're the negative trains going, the negative thoughts are going, picture a stop sign in your head and then just be like, stop. This is not working for me. This is not making me feel good. Mm. And then sh try to shift the narrative, right? So it's hard. <laughs> Hannah and I are not saying that any of this is easy because it is not. <laughs> but the more you do it, the better you get. And that's how you overcome imposter syndrome is really practice, practice, practice and telling yourself, I got this. I can do it. Well, make exactly. it till you make it kind of situation because you're already there. You're there. You know what? I always think that the worst ideas are the ones that you don't do. Like that, that to me, that's a fail. You didn't even try. You didn't even show up and try. So show up, do your best. I And at least you did that. At least you showed up. That's better than the people sitting on their couch. Oh, I wish I could do this. Right. So <laughs> at least Absolutely. you should. So this is a this is a fun question. How do you stop overthinking? You know what? Cooking, I cook, I bake, I paint, I go on walks. I try to occupy my mind as much. So it's not being focused on the overthinking, right? Um, and I also like breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth for 15 seconds. Focus on a color, smell, place. Um, so that kind of helps me because now I'm focusing on something that I like, a place that I like the smell of. Um, but activities, extracurricular activities are great for overthinking. I, I saw somebody um, say writing. Writing is super therapeutic, but I can only do it in the dawn, crack of dawn. I can only do when I wake up. You try I to journaling, to be honest. It doesn't work for me, but... <laughs> That's what, that's what it is though. It's, it's finding what works for you, right? If we were to say, go journal or go for a walk or go bake something that might not work for you. So try out different things. See what, see what happens for you. See what works for you because it does look different for everybody. Yeah. Right. But obviously there's a bunch of tips that other people can give you, but you got to try it out. You can't just try one and be like, oh, it didn't work. I'm not going to do it again. No, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, trying to see if there's other questions. No. Oh, yoga is a good one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I also don't like yoga. I'm, I'm really bad at the, at the typical self-care things. They don't work for me, <laughs> but <laughs> I found what does work for me. So, <laughs> but yeah, if, if anybody ever was like, Courtney, do yoga. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> it does not get my thoughts out of the head. It just they just keep it going. Prompts it even more. All the silence. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I can't be in quiet. Quiet doesn't work. Music, Disney soundtracks. <laughs> oh well, Disney just makes you happy. This is just what me. makes you happy. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Hannah? Oh, I think they're shy today. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's okay. <laughs> oh, where can we find your podcast? Oh, oh boy. I forgot. See, I've been all here talking, talking. Um, it's the advice from Hannah show. The advice from Hannah show, just like it says on my title up here. Um, advice from Hannah. So we are on Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. I'm on everywhere except your phone right now. So um, find me on there. <laughs> That's where you advice from Hannah. Just type in advice from Hannah on, on Spotify or, or Apple or SoundCloud and, and you can find me there. Happy listening. It's a great podcast. I actually, um, oh, <laughs> I'm going to say that I have not been a podcast fan. I, I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting it. And then I, um, I listened to a couple of Hannah's and I, now I like podcasts. So <laughs> that is the biggest compliment ever. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm going to cry. I'm going to go cry now. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. And everybody, um, if you, you know, I, I believe everybody here is affiliated with Van Hack in some way. You should all be in our Slack, um, the Van Hackathon Slack. Find each other there. Like, build the connections. That's what you know, we would love to see that happening there. So please do that. <laughs> okay, I think we'll, we have time maybe for one more question. Uh, if anybody wants to get that last one in there. I'm loving the chat though. It was making me very happy. Everybody's supporting each other. Everybody's wanting to connect with each other and it, it's awesome. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. These chats, I, the amount of things I've, been able to achieve in these chats I can begin to tell you that's where the magic happens because you're in a room with everybody that thinks like you that's mm -hmm. that doesn't happen all the time and this is how I met Hannah right Not in the chat, but she was speaking for a, a nonprofit. I just happened to see it on LinkedIn I used to be in the nonprofit space and mm -hmm. I connected with her on LinkedIn after I was like hey <laughs> I really liked what you did I want you to come speak for me basically <laughs> And that's how that happened. See, it's living proof. It it does work. It does work. I, I used to I used to sit in networking rooms before and I'd be like, no, that doesn't work. And then now I'm like, no, it works. I'm like a, a cheerleader for it. Yeah. And I personally, I I used to suck at networking, but now I'm like, shoot your shot. And what's the worst that's gonna happen is a no or silence. But oh, uh, either or it's good because then you can be like, what did I say wrong? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you all so much for coming. Uh, thank you so much to Hannah for coming and speaking with us. It was amazing. And I hope you all have great luck in whatever you're doing. And we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for passing by. <laughs> thank you, Courtney, for having me. Of course. Thank yeah. you. Bye, everybody.